Hello, today we will be learning a new way to solve multivariate simultaneous equations using geometry. We will be learning about the cosine rule as well as the included sign formula of calculating the areas of triangle. And we will be doing this with the help of a 2019 CMI entrance problem. So before we move on to the problem, we first learn about the cosine rule. So the cosine rule or the law of cosines actually gives us a way of relating two sides of a triangle to the third side given the included angle. With the help of this, we can calculate the length of the side of a triangle or find the measure of the included angle. As we will see in our problem. Now, the cosine rule actually states that given the length of two sides B, C and angle A, we can actually relate this to the length of the third side that is A. So, basically it gives us the relation between them that is A square is equal to B square plus C square minus 2BC cosine A. Similarly, if we go in a cyclic manner, we can conclude that B square is actually equal to C square plus A square minus 2CA times cos B. Similarly, C square is equal to A square plus B square minus 2AB cosine C. Now that we know about the cosine rule, we will move on to one more theorem which will help us in the upcoming problem. This is the included sign rule for areas. This theorem will actually give us the area of a triangle given the length of its two sides and the included angle. It basically says that area of a triangle is half B C sin A. That is half length of two sides and its included angle. So, since the area of the triangle will remain constant no matter which two sides we choose, we can write this as half BC sin A or half CA sin B or half AB sin C. The proof of this is very simple. I will just give one way to prove this. So what we can do is first drop a perpendicular from B onto AC. Let's call that BD. So BD is perpendicular to AC. Now consider triangle ABD. In this triangle, the side BD is actually AB sin A because in this triangle sin A is just BD upon AB. So BD is just AB sin A. Now AB length of AB is just C. So we can write this as C sin A. So the length of this altitude onto the base AC is C sin A. Now we know that area of the triangle is half base times height. So delta is just half times base AC times height BD which is same as writing half times B times C sin A which gives us our formula half BC sin A. Similarly, if we drop a perpendicular from C onto the side AB we can conclude this formula. So now we move on to our problem. This is the 2019 CMI entrance problem. Here we are given three positive numbers x, y and z which satisfy the following relations. That is x squared plus y squared is equal to 3 squared y squared plus yz plus z squared is equal to 4 squared and x squared 
plus root 3 xz plus z squared is equal to 5 squared. And we have been asked to find the value of 2xy plus xz plus root 3 times yz. At first glance, there isn't anything obvious to guide us through the problem. But a careful inspection will actually give us some useful hints. Firstly, all x, y, z are positive and the presence of second degree terms on the left hand side can be an indication towards a geometric solution. So, based on the hints, let's look at the following construction. First, we consider this 3, 5, 4 right angled triangle, obviously right angled at B. Why do we consider that? First, let's take a look at the given equations. Since we were given x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared and y squared plus y z plus z squared equals 4 squared and x squared plus root 3 x z plus z squared equals 5 squared, we consider a triangle of sides 3, 4 and 5. Now we experiment a bit. Looking at these equations provided to us, we can hypothesize that we can find a point P on this plane such that PA is equal to X, PB is equal to Y and PZ, PC is equal to Z such that they satisfy these equations following the cosine rule. Now how do we do that? Of course, we experiment. So, let's consider the point P somewhere around here and obviously we join P with A P with B and P with C Now, let's mark the sides. We said let PA be X, let PB be Y and let PC be Z. Now we are given that X square plus Y square is equal to 3 square. So let us focus on this triangle PAB. Now from cosine rule we know that given a triangle ABC we have the relationship between all the three sides. So, we can use this to actually find the cosine of the included angle. So, if we are given the three sides, we can actually conclude the included angles. So, how do we do that? We know that A square is equal to B square plus C square minus 2BC cosine A using the cosine rule as we saw before. So, that actually gives us that cosine A is equal to b squared plus c squared minus a squared upon 2bc. So, we are going to use this information in our triangle PAB. In triangle PAB, we know our x, we have our y and we have a 3. So, we have a relationship between these three and we can try to find angle APB using this information. So, angle APB, if we mark these angles as theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 respectively, we can know that cosine of theta 1 is actually equal to x squared plus y squared minus 3 squared upon 2 times x times y that cosine of theta 1 is actually equal to 0 because from equation 1 x squared plus y squared minus 3 squared is equal to 0. So cosine theta 1 is equal to 0 implies theta 1 is equal to 90 degrees. Similarly if we focus on triangle BPC, we can conclude about angle theta 2. So, 
by a similar logic cosine of theta 2 is y square plus z square minus 4 square upon 2yz which is equal to minus of yz based on equation 2. So, cosine of theta 2 is minus of yz upon 2yz. So, yz and yz will get cancelled. Since these are positive, we can cancel out terms everywhere and we don't care about the denominator being 0. So, this becomes minus half and we know that cosine theta 2 is equal to minus half when theta 2 is equal to 120 degrees. Similarly, we can conclude about cosine theta 3. We know that cosine theta 3 is actually x square plus z square minus 5 square upon 2xz. So, cosine theta 3 is x square plus z square minus 5 square upon 2xz and from equation 3 x square plus z square minus 5 square is actually minus 3xz minus root 3xz. So, cosine theta 3 becomes minus root 3xz upon 2xz. Xz, Xz gets cancelled and this gives us cosine theta 3 is equal to minus of root 3 by 2. And this implies that theta 3 is actually equal to 150 degrees. Now, we have all these theta, theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. Now, we verify our hypothesis by adding them up and checking if they are 360 degrees. So, theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to 90 plus 120 plus 150 which gives us 360 degrees and this confirms our hypothesis. And now remember that we were asked to find the value of a certain expression. So, let us take a look at that. Now, remember we had to find the value of this particular expression and in order to do that we make use of the data available to us. So, now we know the included angles and we will use our included si angle sign theorem for areas. So, how do we do that? We know that area of triangle ABC is actually equal to area of triangle ABB plus area of triangle APC plus area of triangle BPC. Now, area of triangle APC can also be found using half base times height because triangle ABC is a right angle triangle because 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. So, area of triangle ABC is just half times 3 times 4 which is equal to 6 and on the right hand side we can find area of triangle APB, APC and BPC in terms of x, y and z and hope that it follows some form of this kind. So, now we know that area of triangle APB is just half x times y times sine of the included angle that is 90 degrees. So, triangle APB gives an area of half times x times y times sine 90 degrees. Similarly, area of triangle APC is half times x times z times sine of 150 degrees. So, that is half times x times z times sine of 
150 degrees and area of triangle BPC is half times y times z times sin 120 degrees. So that is done. Okay. So now we just equate the left hand side and the right hand side. So on the left hand side we had a 6 which is equal to the area of triangle ABC which is equal to sum of these three triangles areas which we wrote it in terms of x, y and z. So now this gives us half times x, y times sin 90 which is 1 plus half times x, z times sin 150 which is equal to sin 30 which is equal to half plus half times y, z times sin 120 which is equal to sin 60 which is equal to root 3 upon 2. And now, if we multiply 4 on both sides, we get that 24 is equal to 2xy plus xz plus root 3 times yz. And let's see what we were asked. Yes, we were indeed asked to find the value of 2xy plus xz plus root 3yz. And we found that the value of this expression is actually equal to 24. So that's all for this problem. See you in the next one.